here in the Merfolk deck list. A hibernation. Other than that, pretty usual stuff. Lawan, Gite, Submerged, Hydroblast, and Blue Elemental Blast. Thanks. What did the AJ Hansen just walk by? What did he say? So that was his favorite pro. You're, you're his favorite pro? Uh, all right, I'm so, so happy right now. So for those of you just joining us, uh, this is round five of the uh, legacy portion of the uh, Open Series, Star City Games Open Series here in New Jersey. We are here bringing you coverage with me, Gavin Verhey, and my coverage partner, Jake Van Lunen. Uh, on your left, you'll see Gerard Fabiano playing Team America. Pretty standard list compared to the one that we saw last week. He's playing a fourth, inch, uh, fourth uh, Himda Turak. A uh, couple other maybe small changes he's made, but overall the list is pretty similar. It's a deck he's very familiar with. Gerard loves his rock decks. He's done great things with them. He played uh, a masterful rock player. Yeah, I mean, Gerard won. knows how to play discard spells. <laughs> yes, uh, he won a Grand Prix with Rock a couple years back. Uh, on the other side of the table, Justin Kohler looking nice and dapper. He's playing a Merfolk pretty stock list. This is very close, if not the same, to uh, Alex Bertoncini's list. It's got one spell pierce in the main deck. Uh, the, Alex's trademark one Mishra's factory alongside, uh, let's see, Curse Catcher, Silver Real Depth, Lord of Atlantis, Coral Helm Commander, Regery Sovereign, some Kiras, and a single Sora of Temptation. So a lot of the uh, usual suspects sitting there. So uh, Justin leads with a Vial. Yep, Vial comes down. Vial's like such a powerhouse against any blue base deck. I mean, Vial is just the best card in so many decks. Yeah. You play on turn one, even if it's blue base Arguably decks, the best card in the format. It's, people have called for it to be banned. It's just so strong. Um, I remember when Dark Seal came out, it took a long time for that card to catch on. Uh, so it looks like. I think is his. I think, no, I think his opponent drew his card and then attempted to put the vial counter on the vial. Uh, and that is not okay. So uh, I think that counter is going to get removed if uh, it happened as Gerard said it happened. Nope. Looks like the counter stayed on. That is a red dice, correct? On the vial still? So yes. Yep. Looks like the counter got to stay on. Um, so I don't think he drew his card yet. I think we misunderstood the situation. Yeah. It's unclear. I mean, Gerard knows what vial does, so not sure exactly what happened there. And uh, Lord of Atlantis from Justin Gerard goes for a brainstorm here. And uh, Gerard figuring out what's he, what is he going to put back here. Goes for Curse Catcher. Just inside. Slowly amassing his uh, Merfolk army. I think Justin's just got a pair of lands and a, a pair of dazes in his hand at this point. Okay, so he's going to have to ride that Curse Catcher and Lord of Atlantis a little bit here. Yeah. Of course, Dace is a good card to have back up. The trick of the Merfolk deck is with the Aether Vial, you can really abuse your islands because you can just pick them up to Dace and you don't have to worry about having a ton in play to cast your spell. So Dace doesn't yeah. really have a drawback. Uh, you can force a will and you know keep your pressure up. So you can activate your Muta Vaults and you know pick up your islands to Dace. Yeah, Vial lets the deck operate oh. under uh, <laughs> under a lot of uh, stress. And, you know. And there's the him. <laughs> Gerard's like, all right, let's go to rolling. Four, four. All right, take that one. So for those who uh, normally might just look at their opponent's hand and, or you know look at the back of their opponent's cards and pick two cards, usually you want to randomize it because it's possible player got a read on you somehow and like knows which card is which. And in those cases, it's just better to randomize it so it's actually random and no one's getting an unfair advantage. 
for being able to roll the dice. Also, it's truly random that way, where people can like position cards in their hand to make it less likely for you to pick one or something yep. like that. So rolling a dice when a random effect happens uh, is usually a reasonable call. And all right, in for four on Justin's side. Drops Gerard down to 16. Or, uh, let's see, should be fifth, 14 because of a fetch line crack, right? I see two fetch lines in Gerard's graveyard. He didn't gain life anyway, right? Um, no, so. Yeah, so Gerard yeah, uh, should be 14? 14, yeah. Yep. Tombstalker comes in. That's a, Gerard exiles his graveyard. Pretty happy with, for that uh, Tombstalker. He plays around both days. Is... Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't need any of these. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tombstalker is going to be quite a quite a threat. Fortunately for Justin, uh, his curse catcher still has Island Walk, Lord of Atlantis granting the Island Walk ability to all other merfolk, and plus one, plus one, which is a nice little bonus. So uh, Justin dazes here, floating a mana to make sure he doesn't, doesn't get dazed back or has another way to pay for it. And Engineering Explosives doesn't really do much. Yeah, I mean, the explosives wasn't really necessary. So uh, I'm sure Gerard's happy to uh, have his opponent use up counterspell on that. Yeah. Again, though, with four lands in play, you really don't want to walk into a daze with anything. Now that explosives will look really nice. Huh. Gerard passes without attacking. It seems like an odd play. He's saving himself the damage from the Lord of Atlantis, but uh, the other creatures have a... Uh... Ooh. That's a nice one. Just in a establishing position. If trying to figure it out now, you cannot profitably counter this go for the throat. Oh no, he's going for it. It's not going to work out, buddy. Yep. Not going to work out. You end up with just a lord. That's like not. Wow, he threw a lot of resources at that go for the throat. Yeah. I don't know, if, and now Gerard feels like maybe he's got the opportunity to attack with the Tombstalker. That Aether Vial is, is threatening, he can plop something down, but, uh, okay, he's drew force here, so Justin is running low on threats. Yeah, Gerard's looking like he's in control of this game, though. <sighs> Ooh, a Goyf. He's gonna put the brakes on this. Justin's got a wasteland here, but he's not going to want to sacrifice it because he has the force in hand and a blue card to pitch. Unfortunately, it's looking like, you know, he's in chump mode. Yeah, this is, uh, Justin is pretty much out here. Uh, the thing about the Merfolk deck is it's really good about gaining tempo early, and then sometimes in, like, creature mirrors it can hold the, the ground going along, but, man, in a in, when you get to a position like this where all you have is one guy, it is very difficult to get back into the game. Is that lethal? That's not lethal? Uh, well, Gerard exiled his graveyard with Tombstalker. Oh, so okay, yeah, you're right. That Tarmogoyf is not very large. He's just like land, instant creature. Uh, let's Gross. see. Well, I don't know uh, what's on... So, one more than land, instant creature. Yep, and uh, Justin loses that one. Uh, did not have a pretty good start there. He just had a couple creatures, and that was it. If, uh... Yeah, Gerard played that go for the throat really well. He waited for a really strong opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah, like that go was was excellent for him. I mean, it, it, it essentially killed two creatures for one card and made his opponent use a daze, which is very effective. Um, definitely worked out well. So I spoke to Jerry a little bit about his Doomsday Pile. Okay. And... Uh, he informed me that he simply forgot 
<laughs> about Carpet of Flowers. Oh no. And that's how I messed up. So on those turns where seemingly it was not <laughs> really using the Carpet of Flowers when it would have been profitable, that's what was going on. Not a card a lot of people are used to playing with. Yeah, uh, it's certainly. I, I have it pulled up permanently here because everyone who stepped into the booth has had to read Carpet of Flowers. Uh, it's up on my screen if you want to take a look. Or if you're already pulling it up. Uh, at the beginning of, just to reiterate, Carpet of Flowers, at the beginning of each of your main phases, if you haven't added mana to your mana pool with this ability this turn, you may add up to X mana of any one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. It's a one green mana enchantment, uncommon from Urza Saga. And the advantage here is for like a, all the decks that uh, Jerry wanted against are blue, so you just plop it down on turn one or two, and you gain such an insurmountable mana advantage. Easily on turn three, you can do something like Doomsday, okay, you countered it show and tell, which is such a big mana boost for that deck. Uh, but we will not see any Carpet of Flowers in uh, this battle here. Gerard Fabiano. It's a very interesting card. <laughs> really powerful. It's, it's really weird. Like You don't really see a lot of it. I saw it in a couple Legacy sideboards a long time ago, but I haven't seen it recently that much. Um, George Fabiano pretty handily took the first game here against Merfolk, kind of a weak draw by Justin Kohler. Yeah, it looked like the Merfolk draw was going to be pretty explosive when he played like the Vile into the Lord, Yeah. but then he ended up sputtering out a bit. He, uh, he never really got a good opportunity to use his dazes. Yeah, it, Gerard it, played around them very well. Yeah, it just looked like his hand didn't develop. I mean, he had Curse Catcher, Lord, Aether Vial, and two dazes, and which seemed awesome, but we didn't just draw the Merfolk to back it up, and that was a huge issue for him. Yeah, if you draw more guys there, then you're in a pretty strong position. You can keep on attacking. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, I mean, like, if you just go back to that game and imagine he would draw, drew, like, another Lord of Atlantis or a Merfolk Sovereign or, you know, something of that nature, and the game switches entirely. Suddenly, he's a pretty big aggressor. Gerard doesn't have a lot of good answers to what he's doing, and he can use his cards for tempo. Well, and Gerard, at the end of that game, still had a... He still had all these, so... I mean, Gerard still did have plenty of spells he could cast. Yeah, he had, like, five, five live ones, so... Yeah. But I could, I mean, you know, things go a little differently. I could definitely have seen Justin picking up that game instead of Gerard. True. So, uh, players present and uh, about to pick up their first seven cards. Let's see, on Gerard's half, I see like uh, Jace, a Force of Will. Over on Justin's side, I see Force of Will, Lord of Atlantis, Kira, maybe two Force of Wills. And in days, and uh, they both decide to keep, and they're off to the races. Gerard leads on Misty Rainforest, Justin with just an island, no vial this time. Mutavolt on turn two for Justin, and he has no play. Yeah, his hand is not aggressive at all. Yeah, I mean, and he has a lord, but uh, he did not cast, uh, cast it last turn. Well, I mean, he doesn't have a second blue. Right. That's a big feeling. Oh, and there's a Mutavolt. That is still not a second blue. He can play down the Regery this turn. But that could be a huge issue uh, this, if he can't get the second blue. I mean, the Regery on its own isn't really uh, accomplishing a ton. It will make those Muta Vaults into six or into three threes, so they can swing six for six power, yeah. if he draws another. But he really needs that second blue. The, the good thing about the Regery is it really lets uh, Justin unload his hand. Uh, oh, and it's getting forceful willed. Yeah, this is one of the major issues with uh, Merfolk decks in general when you look at Legacy. The uh, the decks are very, very reliant on their Aether Vials, and uh, it's hard to train yourself to know that uh, to keep a hand without Aether Vial, it's really important to have UU in your opener. Jared fetches. Justin searches. Here comes Tarmogoyf down, and, and he forces again. Justin, good at forcing things, but uh, running out of cards in hand pretty fast. The thing about force is, while it is a free counter, I think a lot of players really overvalue it, simply because it's a two-for-one every time. You lose a card on the exchange. And uh, now Justin just has that Regery. Those Muta Vaults are going to be great if he draws the land, but he doesn't. He does draw Stony Brook Banneret, which he can play, um, or not. 
Yeah, he'd rather just. Uh, oh no, sorry. Is that five points? What is that card? It's not a banner. You don't play that card in a legacy. Yeah, like, I mean, Silver adept. Thought maybe you were. Uh, it might be an adept, in which case he cannot play it. He doesn't have another merfolk. Right, doesn't have another merfolk. It's used to. Uh, it doesn't look like either. Oh, is that, it's a submerge. That's what it is. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, the submerge is definitely good. It'll help him keep up his tempo here. Gerard is at 11, and if, like, for example, yeah, Gerard... Yeah, all he's do is lean on him a little bit. Right, like, if Gerard leads with... Gerard might fall over. <laughs> let's say, Tarmogoyf, or some kind of creature. Okay. And then he submerges. And then, uh, you know, he can go activate both Mutavolt attack, but... That Tombstalker might put a wrench in things. Mistress Factory, nice little addition. Can pump uh, Mutavolt, which is worth noting. Yeah, it has. It's going to, uh... All creature types. It's going to activate both Mutavolts here. Three three meter vaults. Doesn't submerge is it any creature? Well, I think so. He's looking at that submerge. I, I I thought it was you can play it for free if there was a, if they have a forest. They have a forest, yeah. If they have a forest, you have an island, you play submerge, and it puts it on top of their library. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it does. It costs five normally if they don't. But in legacy, uh, you're seldom paying retail. So, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's true about for most things in Legacy, by the way. You're still not paying retail on anything. Everything comes with a discount, except for the cards. Uh, so, eight, eight mana, or sorry, eight damage in on uh, Gerard. Consuming Vapors, nice little uh, standard legal card there. You don't see a ton of. Now, if, so Gerard's going to go up to five. If Justin draws a land, he has him dead because it can pump with the Mistress Factory. But that was an Aether Vial, not a land. So instead, he's just going to bash Gerard down to one life. <laughs> Consuming Vapors will rebound and not deal any damage, or not gain him any life. And then uh, Gerard has to find a way to beat the ar army of Manland <coughs> that Justin is presenting. It's pretty tough, like... All right, well, Jace comes down. He's going to try and dig, but I don't know what he's going to be able to find here. <laughs> Gerard thinking, you know what would be good <coughs> right now? If his opponent attacked his Jace? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that what he's going for? I mean... I don't know. Like, that seems like it's all he out, right? Like b Bluffing Gerard's verdict. Hope he gain some life uh, if there were lands in Justin's hand, which there cl clearly aren't because he would have killed them last turn. Uh, I mean, I think Gerard's just playing it out. Giving Justin the opportunity to mess up, which is always reasonable. I don't think this game is going to uh, run low on time, so these players are... <coughs> You know, Gerard has every right to take uh, the time to play the Jace he wants and see if uh, Justin will accidentally attack it. Seems pretty unlikely, but it could, it could happen. Crazier things have happened. There are all kinds of stories about people lightning bolting, lightning bolting creatures when their opponent is at, you know, three or less life. This Gerard's list now. Justin sends in with his uh, man lands and Gerard picks up his cards. Merfolk okay. picks up a game. So they'll be heading into game three and Gerard Fabiano will be on the play for the third game. Ah, uh, so that... In the background you can see Nate Pease telling a bad beat story. <laughs> That's what he does. The he usual. wears his hats crooked and tells bad beat stories. It's so, a master. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... So in that match, like we saw Justin pretty aggressively use two Force of Wills, um, and I think like a, you know he looked really far behind for a second there, but the lands were really able to recoup it. It shows you like how that Merfolk deck can go from like zero to sixty really fast because all he had was a yep. Merfolk Redry. That was it. His draw was kind of slow and just like all right, force some key spells. I have two Mutavolts. I'm gonna crash in for you know six eight with just one creature and two Mutavolts back. I mean, uh, yeah. That's a uh, that's what the Merfolk deck does, and that's why I think it's a legacy mainstay. Some people have harped on the deck, saying it's too fair, saying it gets many bad draws, saying his mana is bad. But if you look at that game, like it, it drew its mana poorly, it didn't draw a good mix of creatures and spells, and it was still able to take down Gerard Fabiano. Yeah, the fact that he forced both creatures was extremely helpful there. Like he was able to submerge the Tomb Stalker once yeah, it came out. That submerge is huge. And. Uh, Really just had the right cards to deal with what Gerard was doing. Yeah, I mean, Submerge is such a beating. It's a card that, uh, when, when it works, like, every time you cast it for free and just put a creature top of their library, it's, 
I mean, that's just an unbelievable card. It sets them back, especially in Legacy, where you're often expending resources to put a card into play. Against a card like Tomb Stalker, if Gerard exiles his graveyard and you submerge it, he might not be able to even be able to cast it the next turn. Yeah, it's true. So, be interested to see how game three goes here. Who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? That's an interesting question. I think it's uh, very draw dependent. I feel like Gerard could do very well if uh, he was on the play with his engineered explosives. Um, I feel like Gerard's go for the throats are really valuable if he draws either of them. Uh, post board, he has a lot of spot removal. That game was interesting because the fact that Justin had an army of mostly manlands, it meant that Gerard didn't get the value he wanted out of his uh, consuming papers. And right. if it had been two creatures and one manland that were bashing him, the game could have been very different. Yeah, consuming papers is a really interesting sideboard card from Gerard. I don't think that's uh, I mean, it's, it's you know, a standard legal card. It doesn't even see a ton of standard play now, but... You know, gains you some life, potentially kills off some creatures, and a legacy where so much is about protecting particular creatures, like what your one Tarmogoyf or your one Tomb Stalker, that Consuming Vapors can be pretty brutal, uh, making sure you can kill off their creature and gain a bunch of life in the process, which can really be a big swing in the matchups where, like, Tarmogoyf is a 5-6 or, you know, or larger. And uh, here comes Vile from Justin. They, uh, he opted to uh, Wasteland Gerard's, uh, Gerard, and uh, finally he's content Viling. So once again, the Merfolk deck doesn't even need a lot of lands to operate. It can uh, trade off those wastelands. Uh, Justin still has two lands in this instance, but even if he didn't, that vial would certainly go to town on uh, Gerard. Then the players uh, shuffle up. All right, and Gerard deploys. Uh, the ubiquitous Tarmogoyf. Don't daze me, bro. <laughs> and uh, there will be, be no dazing here from Justin. <laughs> Justin has a reminder on top of his deck to make sure he takes up that vial every turn. Oh, and there's the force. He drew it a little late to hit that Tarmogoyf. And that Goyf is going to be pretty big. It's only a 1 2 right now, but it'll quickly grow to uh, much larger proportions, I imagine, depending on the contents of Gerard's hand. Even if uh, Gerard casts a removal spell and Justin counters it, that's still adding at least instant, if not sorcery, to the graveyard. And Brainstorm here, which is going to bring that Tarmogoyf up to a 2-3. For those of you just joining us while uh, Gerard brainstorms, I'm Gavin Verhey here with Jacob Van Lunen. Hello. And, and this is round five of the Star City Games Open Series here in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, on your right is Justin Kohler, a Merfolk player. He's uh, been playing his deck pretty well. He's, he knows to play for tempo um, and uh, is picking up uh, one last game on the back of pretty much just a Mero Regery and a couple Muta Vaults with some well-timed uh, Force of Wills. On the left, Gerard Fabiano playing Team America, very similar to the, to the deck that got a uh, second uh, last week. And I, he didn't make a ton of changes. He added a fourth hint to Turak, uh, you know. And he's been playing the deck. He's 4-0 currently, both players are. And he's looking, both of them are looking to be 5-0. This is game three, and the winner will advance to 5-0 in this event. It's an interesting game so far. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, they're both, definitely both playing at parity with one another. Yeah, I mean, we've just seen something totally different from the last couple of games. We saw the the double wasteland draw, which really, uh, you know, hampered the start of the game. And you know, in standard, you don't have to worry about that. Well, I can keep my land hands, and tectonic edge will get me on you know turn five six, or after I have time to develop. But in in a legacy, you could just easily lose your first couple lands, and if you don't have a plan after that, uh, it's lights out. Uh, Jard is casting a card named Ghastly Demise on Lord of Atlantis, which says destroy a creature with power, or is it toughness? I believe it's toughness, T less than the number of cards in your graveyard. Toughness, less than the number of cards in your graveyard, yes. And uh, Justin forces it. On Justin's side of the battlefield is an Aether Vial on one counter, I believe, taking up to two, yeah, taking up to two this turn alongside Lord of Atlantis. And Gerard has a Tarmogoyf, which is currently looks to be a 2-3 Tarmogoyf. Mutavolt comes down for Justin. And Lord of Atlantis crashes in, dealing Gerard two points. 
Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Ghastly Demise is in fact toughness. We looked it up. And Corhelm Commander, the uh, Rise of the Eldrazi rare, really gave a great boost to this Merfolk archetype. Being a 4-4 a four, four flying Merfolk that pumps all your other Merfolk, yeah, certainly, no, good. certainly no slouch. And it pops in off your Aether Vial yeah. when it's only on 2, which and we just saw there. Yes, popped in and moved up to the level 3. Next turn, what Justin can do is level his Corhelm Commander up to level 4, activate his Mutavolt, and crash in for a, quite a bit of damage. That'll be uh, yeah, 3 Merfolk on the Lord. Is, uh, Pretty big. <laughs> Mer Flies. Mer Merfolk is a good creature type to be right now on Justin's side of the board, and Mutavolt is conveniently a Merfolk. Uh, Gerard go for the throats, killing off the commander though, so that uh, dashes Justin hopes, Justin's hope uh, for uh, getting to level, level four on that guy. And Tarmowiff comes in with creature in the graveyard now. It's a three-four. Is that a spell pierce you just drew? I uh, didn't quite catch sure. it. Leave yep. another vial. Another vial. So he attacks for five with the combination of Vault and Lord of Atlantis. Yeah, so he drew another vial, and then he's just sitting on an island. So Justin is out of gas. He's going to have to rely on his Lord and his Vault to deal quite a bit of damage. Uh, Tarmogoy Faith, 3-4, crashing in for three here. Justin's going to drop to 11. And Tombstalker comes down for Gerard. Yeah. That is going to be a big issue for Justin. Bad way to deal with that. He needs to find some merge right about now. Uh, Curse Catcher, not a submerge. No, it is not. He can serve in for three with the Muta Vault, but that'll only drop Gerard to nine. And even if he gets in for five the next turn with the combination of his Curse Catcher and his Muta Vault, that'll still only drop Gerard to four. And that a Tombstalker and Tarmogoyf will probably make quick work of him if uh, he doesn't find some kind of answer. I'm unsure what Gerard has in his hand. I believe he has a consuming vapors in his hand here. Um, not totally certain on what Gerard has. He's looking at a, several cards. I think I see, is that a Jace up front? No, it's a ponder. Okay. So Gerard uses one of his four ponders here. Looks at three cards. Now the uh, the board presence that Gerard has presented now really uh, prevents Justin from putting the type of damage he needs to on the table. Uh, yeah, Gerard is... Gerard is looking in a good position here. He's pondering though, trying to figure out what, uh, how could I lose this game? What do I need to find? What could Justin have? Uh, Chris Pakula is out of the tournament. Uh, he uh, picked up a second loss and he is done for. So. Great to see him out at this event. Maybe we'll have a chance to get to talk to him, but he is done playing. All right. So Justin takes quite a bit here. Counting up uh, how big Tarmogoyf is. And uh, Justin's sitting at two. Gerard stands up. All right, yeah, and that's it. Gerard takes the match and advances to 5-0. And New Jersey is representing really well. Uh, yeah, Jersey again, Gerard. Jersey native. Yeah. Gerard uh, actually was in the same kindergarten class as my girlfriend. Really? Yeah. <laughs> were they I friends? I did, uh, I mean, I, I mean, they were in kindergarten together, everybody's friends, right? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, 